Hi everybody, welcome back to Enjoying a Retirement. Today we are in the Dry Tortugas, that's Fort Jefferson there. We just arrived on the Yankee Freedom Ferry. And this video is going to be all about snorkeling and where to set up, what sort of fish you might see and what experience you might have. Uh, as you get there, you're gonna wanna know where do we swim and where do we set up camp? Well, that's what this one's about. My last video showed you uh, taking the Yankee Freedom out there and toured the fort a little bit. This one's all about the water. Right there is the boathouse. That's where you can change when you get back. But as you get off the dock, you're immediately faced with, do I turn left or do I turn right? Um, I recommend turning left. That's headed to the south, southeast. And here is a map that shows where we are. That's the fort. Um, the blue arrow shows where the boat is docked and where we just walked up and where we just turned left there. There is a swim beach to the north, as seen up there, and next to that are pilings, which, um, you know, fish love structure, so you can see some there. South side, we have something similar. We have the South Beach swimming area, as well as more pilings down in that area. Additionally, you can snorkel out to coral heads, and we'll talk about those a bit. And then the final area, which, um, which I'm gonna spend a lot of time on, is you can snorkel around the perimeter of the moat. And I, I think that's probably the best bang for the buck. So here's the southwest side. Down here you have lots of picnic tables. Not a lot of shade for the picnic tables, but that I don't think there's any up on the north side. Going a little bit further, here's some picnic tables under shade. This area is reserved for campers who spend the time there, but they're not always taken. So if nobody's there, perhaps you can set up. But here's the... Um, south swim beach and notice there's quite a few trees here there's a lot more room for shade a lot of room to spread out and it's a great area uh, this is where i recommend going in terms of being able to set up and get a little bit of shade when you go over to the north side the northwest side you'll see some trees there but there's really not much by the beach you're going to be in pretty much full direct sunlight here and in the summertime that's not always a pleasant place to be. But hey, take a look, see which one you like, um, and then go ahead and set up some camp there. And then if you want to go catch the 11 o'clock uh, briefing, you can do that. I also recommend you take a little bit of walk out there on the moat um, wall, both on the north side and south side. You want to check for both which side's more clear, but also which way is the current blowing. Uh, that can uh, help you decide where you want to go first. In our case, it uh, looked like we were there at slack tide, so we decided we're gonna swim the moat wall. For reference, that's about a 40 to 45 minute swim, taking your time, enjoying the fish, doing a little bit of filming. And here we go, starting on the South Beach. Lovely school of silver sides. And then I believe we came into a couple tarpon. I might have just spoiled their lunch, I hope not. Here we have a couple fairy basslets and a cleaner wrasse. Now, as you're going along the side, look for these little cutouts. Fish love to hang out there. Uh, beautiful collection of fish here, mostly mangrove snappers, but there's also a schoolmaster in there uh, and a few others. But what, what a great sight. If you want to see a lot of fish as you're swimming along that wall, make sure that you're looking under the water for these types of cutouts. This isn't the big break we saw uh, in the last video. We'll come up to that. This is just a small one. And here's a moon jelly. We're gonna see a lot of those guys. We'll talk about those more in a bit. Um, get used to them, try to avoid them, but expect that you're gonna get stung. Anyway, more structure. Part of the wall fell off. You can see right there where the brick is exposed. Um, that's a section of the moat wall that fell off and all of that creates great structure and a chance to see a lot of fish. And perhaps even find an anchor and give yourself a chance to wonder how old that anchor is, how it got there, uh, what's the history behind it. All right, here we are. That's a mutton snapper down there with a spot down by its tail, along with uh, some French grunts, and uh, I'm not quite sure what the grunt was with the spot on his tail. Here's another beautiful shot of a mangrove snapper. Looking pretty good. 
I'm going to do my best to identify these fish for you, but please don't hold me to it. Uh, I, I'm learning myself. I believe that was a yellow striped goat fish. They are very, very similar to a yellow tail snapper. Um, but if it's solitary kind of there, I think it's more. There's a Sergeant Major. Those are cute fish. Just, just enjoy watching them. Moving along. There we go. We've got another grunt there. And again, he was hiding out. Now, this is what I want to show you. You can purchase this on board. Um, the Yankee Freedom, that's about $6.95. It is the best single display of the fish that you're going to see that I have found. And I have looked at all of them that I could find. And on the back is a map of the Dry Tortugas. Um, I think it's well worth the money if you're uh, interested in fish identification. Now, so we're going to see a lot of white coral down there. That's all bleached from the uh, summer heat. But here we have a blue tang and more mangrove snapper. I believe uh, this guy down there right there with the reddish tail, I believe he's a mahogany snapper. There we go. Brain coral, all uh, bleached white. Now here we are. Um, we walked up to the section of the moat wall where it had collapsed, and uh, this is that collapse. So we are on the second leg, about the middle of the second leg of our journey around um, the moat wall. There wasn't as many fish here, I think just because it's so big, they prefer the nooks and crannies where they can hide. And speaking of hiding, nice little snapper in there. Guess I shouldn't say little. Looks like a nice dinner to me. But this wall is fascinating, and, and you do get glimpses of some coral that is still alive. So there we had a, a blue striped grunt, another snapper. Moving along the wall, there is another mutton snapper and a blue tang. And I believe these guys right here are Bermuda chub. I could be wrong about that. A lot of bleached coral. I, I imagine that when it's not so warm out, uh, this is a beautiful area. Now look at these guys. Now it's a really pretty school of bar jacks coming. You can tell bar jacks by the blue stripe on top, and then the black stripe that goes across their very back continues into the lower part of the tail only. There's other type of fish that will have black on both sides of the tail, but you can tell a bar jack by the single bottom black portion. Here we are, another moon jelly. Um, you will get stung by these guys. The good news is it, it doesn't hurt anything like, say, a man of war. If you've ever had a prickly heat rash, uh, that's what they feel like. And back at the boat dock, they will have um, some spray that they can put on you to help take some of the sting away. But it's really not that bad. There's a couple more of the uh, bar jacks. Really enjoy watching those guys, and of course I'm fascinated by the jellies. I recommend wearing a long sleeve rash guard, even uh, rash pants if you can, to uh, help avoid. And don't forget, pop your head up. Just enjoy the unique view you're going to get of Fort Jefferson. Going back under, here we have a nice school of grunts called Tom Tates. They are the ones with the black dots at the base of their tail. And now we come up to one of my favorite fish. That's a hogfish. He's also got a black spot, but that's higher up on his back, and that is a much bigger fish. Even though that was a relatively small one, he showed me, look down there, that is a very large hogfish hiding down there. I don't know how well it'll come out, but that guy's probably got front teeth an inch long. So there's the smaller one and the big guys hiding in the background. Another one of my moon jellies. I don't know why this guy's hanging upside down, but he's having a good time. Some more coral, that uh, ferns and coral that 
hasn't totally lost all its color. And there's some blue striped grunts hanging out with another mangrove snapper. And finally, we get into some parrotfish. And again, there's a little more color to the coral on the north side. Maybe that's because it's more uh, in shade than the uh, south and west side. I'm not really sure. Again, here we are looking under one of the ledges. Keep an eye out for the fish that hang out there. And that big guy, I believe, is a spot fin burfish. First time I've seen one of them. But he was hiding out in one of those little cracks I told you to keep an eye on. And now we're finishing up at the North Beach. For our next dive, we're going to walk back to the South Beach and we're going to go out and take a look at the coral heads. To get to the coral heads, you follow the line formed by the first leg of the uh, moat wall and keep on going. You'll see a white buoy out there marking the end of the uh, swimming area and it's about a 10 to 12 minute swim assuming you don't have any currents. Kind of a boring swim. You're going to have a lot of sand and then sea grass. Here's an idea of uh, Oh, about two-thirds of the way out there and then just keep going on the line make sure you're staying on the line for the edge of that uh, uh, first side of the fort wall and now we're coming up to the coral heads themselves which unfortunately are mostly bleached would love to see this in a year that uh, isn't as hot as we're having there we've got some um, yellowtail snapper some other snapper and there's a great barracuda. They're always fun to watch. They're not as scary as they uh, make out to be. And there's another great barracuda. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure if uh, the swim out to the coral heads is worth the effort. I think the, uh, the wall swim is probably your best deal. Uh, there's just too much open water time and not enough interesting structure to hold the fish here. I didn't make it out to the uh, pylons north or south. There was just, you only have four hours on the island and we did half an hour for the orientation. Um, and then I wanted time to go around the fort. But let's take a quick look at the South Beach. And that's where we started. Again, that's where uh, your best shade area is going to be. And it's a beautiful sand bottom beach. And even though it's shallow, maybe four to five feet, um, you know, take a look at the wall. If the wind is blowing right, you're going to get some sargasm blown in there, but that's okay. Just stay away. But look at this. Look at this. That's a manta ray in about four feet of water, maybe 15 to 20 feet off the uh, edge of the water where you come up to the swim beach. This guy was sitting there. I'm, I'm told that uh, they beat their fins like that to try to uh, scurry up something to eat. Now what's interesting though is watch how he does that. And now watch this. I'm assuming that's, that's her baby. And as soon as the baby comes in, she stops beating. I just wonder if that beating is a way to call baby to mama. I don't know. Just uh... Just something I found interesting, but what, what beautiful creatures. Just leave them alone, give them their distance, and chances are you could swim right over them. Like I said, you're only about 15 feet off the water's edge and about 4 feet of water. If you didn't have snorkels on and paying attention, you would have no idea they were there. I only knew they were there because my wife was ahead of me and uh, saw them, and she just started yelling, look down, look down, and I'm glad she did. That's a beautiful sight. Well, with that, we're going to end our tour. I uh, hope you got something out of it. Hope you uh, have a good trip there and enjoy your time. Uh, and as always, I am enjoying retirement. Thanks for watching. Bye.